for Gaza Presents in Conversation With. I'm your host, David Batsoffen, and my guest today is the winner of the Safari Guide of the Year 2015. That's Ian Lombard, and we find Ian um, at and beyond Pinder. Um, Ian, how are you doing? Hello, David. How are you doing? I'm very, very well, thank you. It's a hot, humid day, like always, here at Pinder. And, uh, but very, doing very well. Thank you very much. That's great for asking. Just before I go any further, am I going to see the uh, recently released Pangolin walk past you, perhaps? Um, I'm not so sure. You can see from the camera angle, I'm sitting upright. <laughs> so I don't know. If you see anything behind me, please let me know. All right. But, uh, yeah, we've been super lucky of late. We've been seeing them around the est of where I'm currently speaking to you from. So you never know, I suppose. Listen, it's yet to happen on any of my uh, Zoom chats, but I'm hoping that one day, it will, fingers crossed, it, indeed. Um, Ian, talk me through uh, Safari Guide of the Year 2015. What was it like for you? And like I've asked all the others, did you enter or did somebody unknowing, unknowingly enter on your behalf? Um, yo, what an amazing experience, David. Uh, yeah. I've actually got really vivid and clear memories of all of it. To answer your second question first, um, I knew who had nominated me. <laughs> and yeah, it's actually an amazing story. It's a really good uh, friend of mine, the late Mark Lautenbach, who unfortunately passed away. It's now about two years ago. But uh, Mark was a colleague of mine. He had Pinder and he had taken part in the competition before. And so he nominated me. And at first, obviously, I was uh, quite surprised um, and humbled at the fact that he had uh, thought of me. But yeah, so he nominated me and the rest, as they say, is history. I uh, entered the competition. I was uh, really lucky enough to take part in the competition with guards from all over the country, amazing guards with unbelievable experience. I was you know, pretty young at the time. This is now oh, almost six years ago. I can't believe it. Um, and a relatively inexperienced, quite young, gung-ho, and didn't quite know what I was getting myself in, in, in for. Um, and yeah, frantically started preparing for, for the Safari Guard of the Year competition, trying to fill huge gaps uh, of knowledge that I knew knew was there, but I didn't address it prior to the competition. And all of a sudden, I had this pressure to fill these gaps. And I remember I even booked into uh, Pretorius Corp for two days before, prior to the competition starting, because it was held at Nkambeni down in the south of the Kruger National Park, to sort of scout around and to do my preparation. I had this moment where I sat with all these journals and textbooks strewn all over the front of my Land Rover, frantically trying to fill these gaps. And as I watched the sunset, I was sort of reminded as to why I got into guiding in the first place. And it's because I love working with people. And it reminded me to go through the little email of what, what was expected of us before the, the competition started. And it, and it struck me that it was all about people and how much I enjoy working with people and this opportunity that I was going to spend time with unbelievably experienced guides. And it was a huge learning experience for me. And at that moment, I was like, close all the books. I'm just going to have fun. And it was. It was one of the most enjoyable experiences that I've ever had, ever in my life. I've got super memories of it. All the guides that I've spoken to, all the past winners, bar two that I've yet to, to chat to, have said that exact thing. The moment they decided just to relax and enjoy it, it changed the whole perception. Um, I, I was lucky enough to attend 2019 and um, see how it all worked. And I know that Rion does not want to give the trophy back. So whoever takes it in 2021 is going to have to beat the poor fellow over the head with a stick in order to get it back. But you say you had gaps in, in your knowledge, and I'm not sh sure, but uh, from the other people that I've spoken to, birds and bird calls seem to be the one that caught everybody out. And I remember sitting next to somebody who shall remain nameless um, and, and looking at his list 
Uh, I think I got two. Um, but there were gaps in, in his 60 as well. So I didn't feel too bad at the end of it. Sure, sure. No, it, for me, um, you know, birding was, was, was not the intimidating thing, although I didn't know it at the time that there was a chap um, taking part in the, in the competition called J.P. LaRue, who is a phenomenal birder. And uh, had I known at the start, I would have definitely been more nervous, I'm sure. Um, but I think for me, it was just this overwhelming sense that, you know, there was all of this experience, um, people that had guided all over the world. And here I was trying my hand at um, taking part in a competition in a part of Kruger that I didn't know that well. So I'd say geology. I think was the biggest, most daunting thing that I was like, oh, I definitely need to, to sharpen up on my geology. And remember I mentioned to you all the textbooks in my Land Rover, they were also lots of different grass samples strewn all over the place because I was very, very aware that my grass knowledge wasn't quite up to scratch <laughs> and now that I had to uh, very quickly uh, make up for it in some way. I think for guys that are rather sneaky, in how they set or where they set, because I know when uh, 2019 was in the Waterberg at the NJ Moore um, Field Guide College, and none of the the uh, nominees came from the area, so they stepped into that place. I remember the guys coming from uh, the Karoo had never seen some of the grass. <laughs> <laughs> we we were walked into Sicklebush on more than one occasion. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. In just. Take me back, Lee. I just want to come at you with a left of center question. Take me back to Ian in matric. Did Ian know what he wanted to be, or was it a case of uh, let's get through the school and then we'll worry about where I want to, what I want to do? Uh, certainly a little bit of that, David. I wouldn't lie, but uh, no, absolutely not. Ian in matric uh, knew that he loved the outdoors. Uh, knew that he uh, loved mammals and birds from a really young age but it didn't dawn on me at the time that this was a career that I could actually pursue and so shortly after matric enrolled uh, into a course a BCom investment management course at the University of Stellenbosch studied very hard for three years to get my degree and a month after graduating I applied to come on the and beyond range and training course based here at Pinda and I've not left since. They're still <laughs> struggling to get rid of me. But yeah, it was definitely not part of the, the plan. But I've never, ever in my life had a single, single day's regret. It's been an unbelievable journey. And would you consider, uh, having said what you've done now, that um, Safari Guide of the Year uh, 2015 was a highlight of your career? Um, have there been others that... Uh, other incidents that have been as memorable for you? It's certainly, it's most definitely one of the highlights of my career, if not the highlight. Um, I've had other highs. I suppose the Safari Guide of the Year, the concept of it is just so unique uh, that you'd struggle to match it ever again. So you constantly, you've got constantly got this feeling that this is a once in a lifetime experience. And yeah, I was lucky enough to, to sort of realize that. And I definitely made the most of the experience. And I would definitely encourage anyone partaking in the, in the competition to just give it your all and enjoy it as much as you can. I suppose after the, the Safari Guide of the Year, I think uh, in recognition of, of me winning the competition, and beyond certainly saw the value in me traveling quite a bit and, and helping out with guide training within the company, which is which I, is what I'm currently involved in. And so I suppose those are sort of other highlights that, um, that come to mind, just being able to travel to places like India and East Africa, Botswana, training, training guides for the company. And that all started after I, I actually won the competition, in fact, my first uh, training stint out of South Africa was to India, and that was straight after the competition, I suppose, yeah. as sort of a reward at the time. But that sort of pointed me into the, my, my current role in the, the career that I'm in currently. Can you believe that uh, 
Safari Guide of the Year is celebrating 10 years this year. It would have been last year, but thank, thanks to COVID, um, things had to change. And I know Fagaza had to jump through hoops and move things around and refine nominees because the nominations had already gone out. People had been nominated. Um, I'm hoping some of those people will be re-nominated for 2021 and will still find themselves there. Uh, the, as we said earlier, going into a situation where you know absolutely nothing about the area can be quite daunting. Um, and also, I suppose, from, a thing, from an area or from a perspective of storytelling, do you remember the, the story that you told uh, that I know is part of the competition? Um, I think I told a lot of stories quite late at night after a few beers had been consumed, David. So I won't be able to recoll <laughs> recollect a lot of them. But I do recall telling a story of um, how a, a, a friend of a friend dealt with a baboon problem at his lodge by using a snake in a brown bag. And I, and I remember that being quite a humorous one but i think you know going into the competition um i was very much aware that storytelling was a category that i know i would enjoy and that i thought i would do relatively well at but so i had everything prepared and i found the the, the thing that worked for me is just relaxing and getting to know the people you know whether it was the judges or my fellow contestants and stories just started flowing as they do around the campfire. Yeah. I think those stories are the most memorable ones. And I can, I've got vivid memories of Adrian Bantich telling some of the funniest stories that I'd ever heard around the campfire in Kambeni. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I can remember some, but I'm sure the ones that got the, the most attention, the most laughter out of people are the ones that I can't quite remember. <laughs> couple of beers and I'm sure you will. Now, this, sure. this poor picture is, or this poor fellow is Julius, who was with us at Safari Guide of the Year 2019. And he's been hunkered down in that position for the last almost year and a half. Um, I'm hoping that at some particular point we can use a new photograph and let Julius actually stand up. Um, nominations are currently open. And two questions, uh, or a, a two-part question. Um, if I may, Ian. The first is, what do you say to people who have been nominated? What would be your advice to them? Um, I think um, is to, A, to enjoy it as much as possible. Um, I did say that, that earlier, um, to enjoy it as much as possible. I think people often have this perception about the Safari Guide of Year that it is some sort of test of your knowledge and your skill set. I think someone once gave me the advice that guiding is all about how you make people feel. And so the more you get to know the people around you during the competition, the more you're enabling yourself to create an unbelievable guided experience, whether it's the walking or the game drive. And so don't forget that, is that it's all about people. So the more you get to know people and the better they get to know you, the, the more you know, they'll enjoy being around you. I always say to, to potential guards or, or trainees that a game drive is just an extension of your personality. Yeah. And the more that that personality comes out, the more people will have an accurate idea of what you're capable of. Um, preparation is very important, but don't worry too much about that. <laughs> and then I think another little bit of advice, which is, might seem quite strange given that a lot of people see this as a competition, is to not only get to know your contestants, but befriend them. They're going through the same pressures that you are. Have fun with them, lean on them, support one another, help one another. I've got really clear memories of people helping each other, edit photographs when we still had the photographic comp component of the competition, um, going through stories, reenacting stuff for one another and getting feedback on them. That was all taking part behind the scenes. And I thought, you know, that was a, a massive, massive, massive highlight for me of that competition is just to see the camaraderie around the guys. And the people must definitely make the most of that opportunity. Now, 
in any event, see it as a competition or not, there are going to be winners and losers. There are going to be people who make it through to the shortlist, and then they're not going to make it through to the final five nominees or however many they choose for Safari Guide of the Year 2021. So what is your advice to those people who made it to the original list, but aren't in the final? David, I think keep persevering. I think, I think part of what makes a really good guide is being ab able to accurately self-assess. Um, guests will give you unbelievable feedback that's very valuable. But a lot of guests that come to our lodges don't really have a clear idea of what strings we need to pull to bring all of this together. Yeah. And, and, and we certainly should know, you know, we know of all the hardships and all the highs and the lows that in, goes into a game drive. If you are able to accurately self-assess, you're just enabling and empowering yourself to then improve and work on those sort of shortcomings. For those of the contestants that didn't make the, the final group, keep going at it, keep your feedback honest and accurate, and you'll eventually get there, I'm sure. Good stuff. I, I think, uh, again, talking to all of you, and I'm including you in, now in this group, it's, it's, I've come to realize that this is now seen as a proper career. And I'm using the word proper in inverted commas, because before, I think a lot of people came out of school, they didn't know what to do, um, oh, let's go and be a, a field guide or back in those days, a game ranger. And we'll do it for a short while and then we'll go and become a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But the perception from both within and outside of the industry has changed. People get on a vehicle because they can Google stuff before they get on your vehicle. And they know very quickly if you are or are not a good guide. Um, back in the day, they couldn't do that. They got on and if you told them giraffes slept in trees, they would believe you. Now they can. What do you mean? Crap. They don't sleep in trees, David. You're telling you like, you're telling me stuff now that I don't know. <laughs> Only in the towel do they sleep in the trees. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, because I've in, seen a couple. <laughs> yeah, in the low felt, not so much. <laughs> oh, I should make a note of that. You do indeed, <laughs> but but it is the case now. Um, your guests are are far more savvy, and and it has been. It is a proper career, and I think people need to treat it as such. Bagaza is part of that because they're there to make sure that the standards that are set are across the industry and that Absolutely. everybody knows if, if, if they see a Fagaza badge on a shirt, um, they can rest assured that the person sitting in the driver's seat knows what he or she is doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the world has shrunk. You know, travel has become easier. Like you say, information are people's fingertips. And that uh, comes back to what I said earlier. Your game drive is essentially a, an extension of who you are as a person. And if you treat yourself, you give your guests an honest reflection of who you are and what is out there, they're going to have a good time. And it certainly has become a, a career. It's, it's certainly not um, the era of the Jeep jockey has come and gone, I would say, where people sort of do this for a couple of months, show people around and then go and do something else. Uh, there's some seriously serious professional and experienced people there. And for guys are certainly constantly pushing guards to do better and to be better. And they're at the forefront of guiding worldwide. It's actually an amazing organization to be a part of. Good stuff. Ian, thank you so much for taking time out of what I know has become an incredibly busy conversation. Um, uh, schedule us a conversation, schedule for you. Um, COVID has turned everything on its head. And when you thought you were going to have time off, you're not, which is a good thing no. um, at the end of the day to keep, to keep the wheels ticking over. And I do hope that uh, if you are able to, we get to see you at Safari Guide of the Year 2021, which will be held at the end of June this year. Absolutely, David. Now, uh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. We are busier than what we thought and that's unbelievable for the industry that we're in um, so hopefully we're still busy but hopefully there is a gap if there is a gap I'll certainly bring my grasses book along um, and I'll have to do a little bit of studying I'm also not so sure about the geology I still need to fill those gaps but I'll certainly try my best 
And yeah, I'd love to meet you in person. Oh, there we go. There's your grasses book. Fantastic. Please bring that to, copy along for me. And I have uh, to so say, I can I borrow it if you don't mind. Identify oh, the grass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, sorry, David, you're losing me. You're losing signal. <laughs> Did you ask what? I can't hear you. I'm going through a tunnel, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> no, David, I'd love to meet you in person and have a beer and share some of my stories with you. It's been absolutely wonderful meeting you and chatting to you. And um, yeah, I'd love to meet you in person come June. Uh, and for those contestants getting themselves ready, all the best with your preparation. And I'd love to meet you in person. Have a fantastic day and a fantastic time. And be safe. Cheers. Thanks very much. I've been chatting to Ian Lombard, who was the 2015 winner of Safari Guide of the Year.